Well, hello, and welcome back to another True Crime Time with Junebug Desmi. But it's not really an official True Crime Time or TCT. I'm sure there's like illegal things in here and um, it probably would not happen today. But remember when I covered the Isle of Demons, the truth behind that, quote unquote, and there was Marguerite de la Roque. And I just was so like wowed by her. I was like, maybe I should do a badass lady um, series or like badass bitches. And I don't mind swearing because we're not monetized in the slightest. <laughs> right, Dinky. Yeah. So when I was doing research for the Isle of Demons, I stumbled upon um, another lady who seemed like a badass bitch. Or just a badass lady, whatever you prefer. And I was like, I want to cover her. So that is what I'm doing today. It's not, like I said, not really true crimey. I mean, not a great situation. But I also really love history. Like, I'm a huge fan of Bailey Sarian's new Dark History podcast. I know that was, it's like iffy if people like that as much as her murder mystery makeup. But I really love Dark History. Now, I'm not trying to copy that. But we just, you just gotta be prepared. I might be talking about some badass ladies once in a while. Or men, don't get offended. There's plenty of men in history where I'm like, dang. Like, I think Phineas Gage, you know, the whole bar through his head. He survived. <laughs> like, ha dang. These women throughout history just, I feel like they're not covered enough. Especially this poor lady. At least not for me. So today, we are going to talk about Juana Maria. I assume it's not pronounced Juana, so it's going to be Juana Maria. I do want to preference, her real name is unknown. Now this takes place in the first half of the 1800s, so we're going way back. We're even going like a hundred years prior to Dr. Crippen case last time. Um, and I always mention the ages, but again, it's not really a true crime thing, so it's not really needed. Nor is it really known, her age, so that's why. And this takes place on San Nicolas Island, which is off the California coast. In the status, I usually say if it's like solved or unsolved, but this isn't like a real true crime time. So, I mean, it, it's solved, I guess, because we sort of know what happened. But it, yeah, not really a crime. It's just rude as hell. Now, I always like to start with some pop culture references in case anyone has heard of this or if you're older or younger and you're like oh this is more prominent for my generation yada yada so the main one i saw i'm sure there's many little references but the main one i saw is a children's book written in 1960 called island of the blue dolphins i feel like i'd heard of this maybe i'm just saying that because i did the research but um very popular children's book in the 60s and it was adapted into a movie in 1964. Now, I also thought this was interesting. The main actress who was I, like portraying Juana Maria was actually part Cherokee, which I thought for 64, I'm like, oh, I'm surprised they did that. Sort of way to go, Hollywood. Because even now, they don't necessarily portray Native Americans a lot in film. So the fact they even had someone who had some Cherokee in them I'm like, oh, okay. Not the um, tribe that Juana Maria came from, but you, you know, I was surprised. Now, jumping back to the story. So Juana Maria was born before 1811. That's what I could find. On San Nicolos Island. And that's literally all the info I could find about her upbringing. Or upbringing, quote unquote, because we don't really know how old she is. So I don't know if she was fully grown don't really know her age. I do want to note, San Nicolas Island in the early 1540s was claimed on behalf of Spain because Spain wanted it. And the native, uh, I'm sorry, Tongva, Tongva, T-O-N-G-V-A, were the people who lived there at the time. Now, Juana Maria's people, San Nicolaño, I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly, the Nicolaño, they were thought to be closely related to the quote-unquote original Tongva people there when it was claimed by Spain. Just as a side note. So her people have been there a long time. Now jump to 1814. 
1811, depending on the source. I'm gonna say 1814. Now others knew about the island and some of its people would go to California. Like some of the Nicolania would go to California and just live on the mainland. But California was also not yet a part of the US at this time. It's also just to throw that out there. Now it said the Nicolanios were the last to leave their island until um, the native Alaskan otter hunters working for the um, Russian American Company or the RAC massacred most of the islanders because they believed the Nicolanios killed one of their hunters. I don't know if this is true or not, but I feel like it was quite um, uh, over dramatic if it was the case. I don't know the full story, but the Galanios were the last to leave their island until like this massacre and the fact that the RAC, I assume, brought diseases with them and it decimated the Nicolanios population. Now, due to these things, they're the last ones to leave, they get massacred by Russian and the RAC, and they got diseases going on. They're not doing so hot. In 1835, the last 200 to 300 native people would board a Spanish ship called Pior Esnada. Which I forgot what it meant in English, but I was just gonna go with it to move to the mainland. However, Juana Maria was left behind. Now, a dramatic retelling mentions she jumped off the ship and swam back to her island. It, it's different sources with the dramatic dramatization <laughs> says she jumped off to be with her brother, or some she jumped off to be with her son, but she. It was believed she was left behind, which I do want to note again because I mentioned she in this dramatized version when she jumped off the ship to be possibly with her son. She did have a son. I don't know if she was left behind with her son or if she was left behind while pregnant with her son. I do not know for certain. I don't know if anyone does, but she was left behind and she and possibly her son, if he was born yet, were the only people left on this island. Now, in spite of this, because, I mean, they have lived there, Juana and her son survived and thrived, you could say, on this island for 18 years. 18 years she and her son were on this island alone. It stated they survived off of shellfish and other animals. They used fat from seals for a lot of things. They used sinew. Well, she used the sinew from the seals to like sew their clothing they had yeah because they made their clothing out of the skins and feathers of wild ducks i forgot which type of duck but it was a specific duck and they lived in a cave and also a hut partially made out of whale bones and she kept juana maria kept track of time with notches on sticks so the doing she's doing what she can to survive after ending up in probably not a great situation. Now, I don't quite know when they realized she was missing or if they knew right away. Like, I don't know when they decided we should probably go back for her. <laughs> I don't know. But there was eventually an attempt to find her and to bring her back to be with her people so she's not the only one on the island anymore. I know. No jump. Because remember, she was on this island for 18 years. Like, I don't know when, like, did it take them eight years to realize she, they forgot someone? Like, I don't know their timeline. But there were eventually some attempts to find her, and uh, they failed. But when the, like, last failed one returned, it sparked the interest of a local Santa Barbara fur trapper named George Nedever. Nedever? N-I-D-E-V-E-R? Now, he launched several searches of his own to try to find Juana, and the first two failed. <laughs> but a day or two before calling it quits on their third mission, the men found footprints in the sand that led them to Juana. They were almost, I believe, a day away from calling it quits on their third failed mission, but they found her the day before. Said she was very nervous at first, which I cannot blame her. I, yeah, can't blame her for that. And they also didn't speak the same language. I, it said there was a Native American with them, but he was from a different tribe. So he, 
didn't know quite what she was saying either, but she eventually joined them on their ship to return to the mainland. To Santa Barbara, more specifically. Now, where, where was her son during this? So, turns out he had died on the island. I don't know how many years prior to her rescue, but it's thought to he died, he was in a boat fishing, as I assume they did quite often, and but it flipped over and he never came back up. They believed it honestly may have been a shark attack, which seems crazy, but maybe if they were using a certain bait or if there's blood in the water, but he did pass away on the island or on the coast next to the island. You know what I mean? So unfortunately he only ever knew this island, which, and his mother, which is insane to me. And I feel bad that she lost her son. And they believe that her being utterly, completely alone now, now that her son was gone, was why, even though she was nervous and she didn't speak their language, is believed that's kind of why she just joined them. Like she didn't have anything else to lose, but also the fact like she was alone. And that probably, you know, was getting to her after all these years or months, however long her son had been gone. Now, when they arrived back in Santa Barbara, Juana was said to actually be very excited. She really marveled over the horses, it said. Obviously, she there was not horses on the island she lived on. So she really liked horses, which I thought was sweet. And she ended up actually staying slash living with George, the um, person who funded the last like three voyages to find her. And also, George's wife was there as well. And it said that George and, no, George's wife and Juana got along really well. And again, there was a language barrier, but they seemed to get along very well. Now, speaking of the language barrier, Juana was not able to communicate with a single person, except they eventually found three or four members of her tribe in the area. Like when they were taken off the island, like almost two decades ago. So she could sort of communicate with them. I don't know how close they lived or if they were even like close on the island when they all lived there. But she could communicate with not a single person except for those couple remaining tribe members. I also want to throw in that George guessed Juana to be about 50. Don't know if this is true. Don't know if she just looked weathered after um, surviving on an island for nearly 20 years by herself. Don't know. And it stated she liked having visitors at the house and said she would sing and dance for them, which is kind of nice, I guess. She probably didn't quite know what was happening if she didn't understand any language, but she's like, hey, I can sing and dance for you. I'm just, honestly, I feel like she was just happy to be off the island and around people again. It said she really loved green corn and all the fresh fruits and veggies she didn't have on the island because I think they're mentioned like she could grow some onions on the island maybe there's some coconuts but meat was their like primary food source so when back on the mainland she primarily ate a lot of specifically green corn it said and just all of these fruits and veggies she was so excited to have and sadly it is believed that this may have been her downfall because only seven weeks so not even a full two months after reaching the mainland, she would pass away from dysentery. She would pass away on October 19th of 1853, which dysentery is caused by a bacteria or parasitic worms. And given the fact it's 1853, things were probably not washed properly. There was probably just shit everywhere, literally and figuratively. And the fact she just was scarfing down all these fruits and veggies, which you would think that'd be really good for you and but with the hygiene back then they think she may have caught the bacteria or a parasitic worm from all of the fruits and veggies she was eating so frequently and her green corn and that's what led to her dysentery which she passed away from but I also maybe believe because she was on the island literally alone with just her son she wasn't used to probably diseases I'm guessing I mean, there's no one else to give her a disease. No one was visiting. So I just assume maybe her immune system was a bit shocked. I don't quite know for certain, but she passed away less than two months after being back on the mainland and with people. 
who said before she died she was baptized with the Spanish name Juana Maria. So that is why she's called Juana Maria. She was buried in an unmarked grave, unfortunately, on George's family, pro family plot. It's sweet he buried her in his family plots, but like he couldn't give a, I don't know, like a stone or something? I don't know. No, the aftermath. So in 1928, we're jumping ahead, a plaque for her was actually placed at her grave site by the Daughters of the American Revolution, which I thought was, was nice. I mean, almost 100 years late, but they're the doing something. Now, like her water basket, her clothing, and other things she brought with her to the mainland from the island were part of the California Academy of Science. Sciences, my bad. Uh, but it was um, destroyed, everything was, in the 1906 San Francisco earthquake and fire. Which I looked that up and like, how bad was it? It was bad. It was a bad time for San Francisco. Um, I don't know if any part of that museum like survived. Also said her duck feather dress, which she was found in, was believed to have been sent to the Vatican. Uh, but it had been lost, it said. I don't know how they lose that, but you know. Uh, so there's like no artifacts of her left from the sound of it. But as recently as 2012, archaeologists have found where she used to live on the island, as well as some of her things there. I mean, they're a bit old, but some of her things are there. And research has actually been halted there due to the request of the Petanga Band of Luceno Indians. They, um, they just don't want it disturbed. And I can't necessarily blame them for that. I mean, we had artifacts from her, but you know, we lost them. But that is the story of Juana Maria. I will, if I can, I'll try to link her grave below so you can leave flowers and nice comments only, or if you want to do a bit more research yourself. Also want to mention, like this picture I keep throwing up of her in the video, it's debated if it's actually her, but based off of like what they have to go on. This is what we think it was her. Remember, this is 1853 when they found her. Um, photography's not big back then. <laughs> so that's the story of Juana Maria. I hope you found it interesting like I did. Sorry if I rambled and yelled at Susan too much. She was being a stinker. Uh, I know this is a bit different change of pace. It's not really a true crime. Granted, if you did this nowadays, um, you'd probably get in trouble for abandoning someone on an island. So I don't quite know what I'm doing next, but I honestly think it might be another badass lady because I found someone else while I was doing Isle of Demons research. So if you didn't like this, sorry, another one might be coming. <laughs> anyway, hope you have a good day. Hope you didn't mind this change of pace. And see you next time. Bye guys.